Hello, everyone, and welcome to Connecting the Private Studio Part 2 Top Tech Tools. My name is Felicia, and I will be running everything in the background for our session today. We're excited to have you back for Part 2 of this series with Carly Walton, and I hope that it provides you with some tools and some ideas that you can take with you and use in your own teaching. So let's get things started. Many of you met Carly at our part one webinar, but allow me to introduce her to those of you who are joining us for the first time today. Carly Walton is the, teach, the creator of Teach Music Online, a course and community membership for studio owners. She also runs the popular podcast, Teach Music Online, which focuses on business growth for studio owners. Carly attended the Berkeley College of Music and got her bachelor's degree in music education and piano performance. She was a pioneer to online teaching, having first started teaching piano students online in 2013, well before the pandemic forced the rest of us to follow her lead. She now enjoys creating business courses for music teachers, hosting coaching calls, and connecting with teachers of all instruments around the world. Harley, thank you so much for being with us today. The floor is yours. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. This is so exciting to be with all of you. I can see lots of you saying hi in the chat. If you've just hopped on, I would love to hear where you're watching from. Some of you are in other parts of the world, I see. Someone's in Brazil. So, so glad to have you all. And if you are if you are new to me or to Teach Music Online, an even bigger welcome. I would love to know if you've attended a webinar previously with me or if you're a listener of the Teach Music Online podcast. I know a lot of teachers around the world listen to that podcast and I love connecting with you, hearing about what your goals are as a studio owner, as a musician. I just, it's my passion to help you have success in your studio. So I feel so honored that the Finale team trusts me to help give you some ideas and some tools and recommendations to have more success as a as a studio owner and as a business owner. So today, as you know, we're talking all about tech tools. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you and share with you. Go ahead and dive into my portion of this. And please, if you have any questions, as mentioned, you can put those in the Q&A. And if I see them and they go along with what we're talking about, I'll be happy to answer those along as we go. And I'll also allow some time for that later on um, at the end of the webinar. <clears throat> okay, I'm just opening up my chat so I can make sure I can see your questions. Okay, someone is in Toronto. We have someone in Missouri and Iowa. Wonderful. Great to have you guys. So let's go ahead and dive in. There is a lot that I've packed in here. So I might fly through some things, but please know that the resources shared with you will be helpful after this. And you also can come on over to my membership or the podcast to dive deeper into a lot of these topics because we don't have a lot of time today. And so I always feel a little bit rushed because this is something I've been learning about for now a really long time, almost a decade, teaching tools, online teaching tools. And it's now something I have created hundreds of videos around. So if it feels fast, that's why. As mentioned, I went to Berkeley College of Music. I have been teaching piano online since 2013. I've worked with tens of thousands of teachers around the world now since 2019 when I launched my first course. Pre-pandemic, I thought, you know, I think teaching online is going to be the future for a lot of musicians and for students. It's just very convenient. And so in 2019, I built my first course. Luckily, it was in place in time for March of 2020, which was really remarkable. And currently I run the only online membership for online, specifically online studio owners. And that's anywhere from piano to voice, violin, guitar. And I host, as mentioned, the Teach Music Online podcast. This call today, the teaching tools that I share with you are applicable to both the in-person studio and the online studio. So this is not things that are only helpful for teachers who are teaching online. I think every music teacher, no matter what you teach or how you teach, should be utilizing a lot of these tools. 
Okay, so if you are new to online teaching, the first part of this is specifically about equipment, and then we're gonna talk about software and apps later on. So this first part, I do wanna talk about how you can upgrade your online teaching setup. So the first thing I always tell teachers is start with the best gear that you have access to, and then upgrade from there. So whatever you have, if that is just a laptop, if it's just an, an iPad, whatever it is, start with what you have, especially if you're on a budget, don't go out and buy a bunch of new things. Before purchasing or researching, make sure that you know exactly what you want to create for students before going out and purchasing a bunch of new equipment. For example, are you hoping to teach online group classes? Are you hoping to teach adults, kids? Are you hoping to create courses for students? What is it that your goal is? And that's going to help direct what kind of tools you need to accomplish those goals. I just went over these, but a few more would be, are you recording lessons and hoping to upload? Are you going to be creating a YouTube channel and you wanna create videos for your YouTube? Are you hoping to use interactive games or media during your lessons? I would actually love to hear in the chat who is teaching online currently? Are you exclusively online? Do you have a hybrid studio or are you teaching in person? Tell me in the chat so I kind of know who's here today. Also, okay, <laughs> I'm actually gonna wait for you to tell me in the chat and then I'll move on to this question. Um, so are you teaching online, in person, or do you have a hybrid studio? Okay, Julie says she's teaching online, moved, and then she wanted to stay, her students wanted to keep online, awesome. Ron is teaching hybrid. Ronald is doing in-person, okay. Janet is online, Monica is a hybrid. Okay, I figured we'd have a little bit of a variety. My next question for you is, I actually skipped it. Does learning new equipment scare you or make you feel overwhelmed? Is it, or is it exciting? Tell me in the chat, is it exciting, overwhelming? Do you, are you resistant to learning new equipment? What has kind of been your approach up until this point? <clears throat> I want you to know that it takes time. Learning any new skill takes time. Sometimes I work with teachers who get so overwhelmed and they kind of hit these walls where they go, okay, I can't do this anymore or I'm not good enough. And I always tell them, any new skill is going to take days, hours, weeks, months to learn, but once you have those skills down, you're able to ha add more value to your studio and add more value to you as a musician, so it's always worth it. TMO, which is short for Teach Music Online, was created to help you learn what you need and how to use it effectively. Also, we have a community that's very collaborative and always willing to help. So I wanted you to know that because if you're in that position where you're excited, but maybe a little bit overwhelmed, we have a lot of tools that can help you with that. On the screen, you will see a budget setup. So this is like, in my opinion, the minimum. If you want to be an online teacher and you see yourself doing that for a few years or maybe the rest of your teaching career, you need to have at least the following. You need a computer or a laptop. I always recommend the MacBook Pros or a MacBook Air. I actually use a MacBook Air. The newest chips are going to be your best bet. So if you have a get, you're getting an old, if your computer is getting older, then you might want to upgrade to the new computers that have the M1 or the the M1 chip is the new computers. You need an external microphone. So right now I am using um, this one right here. <laughs> this is the Rode. Um, the Rode mic. Mine's the bigger one. They also have a mini one and it's fantastic. Um, I use this for podcasting. I use it for recording. I use it for a lot of things, but on the screen you'll see some other suggestions and their prices. The teaching tools download also has these available. I'm actually going to really quickly, let me see. Um, I was gonna try to send that file through in the chat, but there was a link in the beginning and in our follow-up email, we will send the teaching tools file over to you. So everything you see on the screen, I'll include links so that you can click through to them on Amazon. You need a webcam. You just need one. Um, you're Mostly because your built-in webcam, you can't move it around. So if you ever wanna show students you're pedaling, 
your specific scale fingering patterns, any other angle you needed that separate webcam for. Okay, Felicia just sent through that link again. So if you wanna click on that, that has everything on the screen. Um, you need a mic stand and an adapter. This is how you can put your webcam over your piano or if you're teaching a different instrument, you can place it somewhere else. And then if you, okay, and then we also need headphones. So any Bluetooth headphones or direct plug-in headphones work. A lot of teachers just use um, iPod, app, no, sorry, AirPods, Apple AirPods for teaching and those really seem to work great because they can hear your voice through that and they can you can hear through that as well. We haven't had any issues with those, but there are some more expensive ones. Here is your upgraded tech setup. So let's say you have everything I just talked about and you're like, okay, that's all, that all sounds really good. I wanna you know, upgrade or have a little bit more to, to add to my studio. There are a lot of really fantastic things you can do. <clears throat> you can, the first thing would be is an audio interface. An interface is going to allow you to connect multiple audio sources into one unit. So if you're teaching on Zoom or you're teaching on Forte, wherever you are, you can channel in your piano and your voice at the same time. That way, the student is getting the direct piano sound versus what the microphone is picking up. You see my recommendations for those audio interfaces. The first one is a Samson g Trek Pro. That's actually a microphone that allows you to connect to your piano. The Zoom H8 is a recorder, so and it records stereo. So if you want to record yourself playing, that would be my suggestion. A lot of teachers have the Scarlett audio interfaces. Those are like a really professional, high-grade audio interface. So that's another one that's suggested. If you want to have video like mine, so something that's really high resolution, really clear, really it looks really good on camera on for your student, then you will need to get a mirrorless or a DSLR camera. And then you see our suggestions. I would say the Nikon Z50 is a great place to start. That is a mirrorless camera. I'm using a Nikon right now in this video, so that's why you see that our video is really clear. Luckily, my husband is a photographer, and so we have three Nikon cameras, <laughs> and he's able to set them up for me for teaching or for doing these webinars. But they are, I know a lot of teachers that actually do go that route for teaching, especially if they have like 40 students they're teaching online. Okay, you do need to have a, oh, if you want to upgrade your microphone, the Audio Technica is fantastic. You could even have multiple in your room if you want to pick up stereo sound from your system, from your teaching setup. The Sennheiser Consumer Audio headphones are great. There's some suggestions on here for lighting. The Elgato Stream Deck works really well with OBS. If you're not familiar with OBS, that is a software that allows you to have multiple views on one screen. So a lot of teachers will have a view. Actually, I think I have a, a screenshot of it, of it in a minute. So I'm gonna save that until you can actually see the example. Do any of you use OBS? It is free, it's a free download. I would love to hear in the chat if that's something you've used or something that you've considered using. If you are a member of Teach Music Online, you get access to dozens of videos on tech, on tech setup, on video calling software, on how to recruit students. I mean, it's a big, huge program, but I wanted to let you know specifically about technology, that we have a lot in there to introduce you to technology and make sure that it's integrated really well for your online lessons. Okay, questions to consider. These, I want you to think about these questions before you upgrade your setup. How are you going to use your setup to deliver an excellent value during your lessons? So this is something I really encourage teachers to think about is investing in your business is going to allow you to charge more for your lessons because in the end, you are delivering a higher quality lesson to the student. So by purchasing a better microphone, a better camera, some webcams, you are creating an experience for the student that's amazing. And in return, you're going to get more students. So how are you going to deliver the most excellent value that you can? 
If you are a full-time teacher and this is something you want to do, I would encourage you to not hesitate to make these upgrades and to do whatever you can to have a professional studio. What is your teaching plan? Do you have a curriculum that you teach from? And how can you keep your students engaged online? These are all things that you should be considering and thinking about. I want you to choose one of the following and tell me in the chat which one you want to do to upgrade your studio as far as equipment goes. So number one is add a webcam. Number two is to maybe plan group lessons. Number three, upgrade your lighting. And number four, oh, I actually, and number one and four are the same. So you can just do number one if you wanna add a webcam. Okay, while you tell me what you want to add, this is a visual of what OBS looks like for teaching online. So OBS allows you to bring in multiple sources. A source is something like a screenshot or a, a window on your computer. It could be your webcam looking at your piano, the pedal or the view of you or an, any number of things you can put within OBS on the screen. So on the top right is Richard Bosworth. He's one of our TMO members and he uses OBS with all of his students. And this is his main view that the student sees. So with his mouse, he can point around to music on the screen from his computer. He also has it connect. Actually, I think that's connected to his iPad. So he's using his iPad for that. He has his pedal, his overhead and then the view of him from the side. So it just is the most amazing view for from the student's perspective to have everything that they can look at and see versus you like holding up books to the screen or trying to move your phone over the piano. It's just like the next level for giving your students a really high quality experience. Okay. Some of you might still have some questions about internet. Really quick though, let me look at the chat. And <clears throat> it looks like you guys are wanting to add overhead webcams, understand OBS. Awesome, Wayne is using OBS. Yeah, it, he said it takes a bit to learn, but has a lot of features. There is a learning curve to OBS, but there's so many resources. We have them inside my membership for you, teaching you how to do it for specifically for teaching piano online. But if you even go to YouTube and look up OBS tutorials, there's like dozens of them. So if you wanted to do that, I would say absolutely. With the caution that um, if your computer system is not newer, then OBS won't work for online lessons. Your machine will just be spinning and your fans will go up really, it basically overheats your computer and it can't function as well. So I would say your computer needs to be within like the last three years, three or four years, and it needs to have a really higher, a higher SSD so that it can process OBS or else it just won't work. So keep that in mind. Let's dive into some of my favorite teaching apps and tools. I have a lot of them. These are just a few that I selected for our call today that I think are worth looking into. The first one is Practice Space. Practice Space is an app that allows you to create lessons for your students and store them in a library and then reuse them for students in the future. I'm going to put a link in the chat. If you've never heard of, o of Practice Space, you can check out Practice Space and actually do a free demo or a free trial with them. I'm good friends with the founders and I think that what they have is really fantastic. It allows your students to track their progress, to track their practice. You can connect videos, links, PDFs. It's just a really great way to keep all of your lessons in one place. On the screen, you'll see kind of what that app looks like. So if you've been looking for a solution, <laughs> this is it's very actually similar to Tanara, who I also recommend. Tanara is a great practice app. Um, this one is a little more focused on incentivizing the students and like showing them, like as you see in the middle screen, when you have a practice streak, um, when you've earned rewards or prizes, when you've earned stickers, it's kind of gamifying the practice experience for the student, which is really fun. And I put that link in the chat if that's something you wanted to check out. Finale is an amazing way to have your students, here we go, sorry. 
Finale is an amazing way to help your students learn composition, sight reading. There's a ton of worksheets within Finale. So while this isn't an app, it is a software that you should be taking advantage of with your students. I actually would love to know who is using Finale right now, either to compose your own music, to create music for students, or using it during your lessons. Are any of you able to use it right now? So as you see on the screen, it says whether you're imagining a simple lead sheet, arranging repertoire for the classroom, or crafting worksheets for your students, you can use Finale for all of that. And one thing I think is teachers or musicians sometimes feel overwhelmed with how robust of a program it is. So my suggestion would be to choose one thing to start using it with. So whether that's lead sheets or worksheets or uh, simple arrangements, just choose one task you want to accomplish with it or one teaching tool. And as you start using it, you'll be able to learn it faster. I always try to approach new software or tools like that with one goal in mind versus saying, I need to go into this program and learn every single thing right now before I ever use it with students, which just isn't true. It looks like a lot of you are using Finale. Awesome. Um, Ronald's using it for notation. Daniel's using it for composition and student exercises. You guys are so cool. I wish I could have you come on screen and show us what you're doing because that's awesome. And this is a couple more screens with what's available to you. So you may or may not know that Finale has a lot of templates and they actually have a huge library of worksheets for music education already built that you can bring in and then you can customize for your students. And in case you don't have Finale yet, there is a new lower price. They launched this in the summer and they're continuing that permanently for, or I, I shouldn't say permanently, we could clarify that, but currently, <laughs> right now it's only $99 to get the Finale software. This actually would be a wonderful thing for you to start using with students who want to compose. So consider getting it. It looks like one of our teachers has been using it since 1998, that's amazing. Okay, another amazing tool that you can use with your students is Universal Music Exams, UME. This is probably something that you have never heard of before, but UME, whoops, UME is going to allow you to do online, I'm actually gonna grab the tab, the link really quick, um, online exams for your students. Let me get that link, um, here it is. So this is a good a good friend of mine who lives in Sydney, Australia. She started this during the pandemic when she wanted to create an exam system that was universal and that students everywhere in the world could participate in. So UME is your solution if you don't have any current exams you're able to do with your students. They are able, you are able to get access to their free syllabus online free pieces in PDF format, videos, MP3 files, and they structure it so in levels. So your student will have specific requirements to meet with their pieces every single exam. It's free to the teachers to get access to all of this. And then your student is the one who pays an exam fee. So they pay an exam fee to take the exam, which would they'd have to do anyway. Any state I know in the US that has part of MTNA exams, or if you have any local exams at colleges that students go through, they have to pay an exam fee. So that is helping them run the program, those exam fees. There is the website, Universal Music Exams. Michelle is amazing. She's the owner of it, she runs it, and she will help you if you have any questions at all with that. Here are a few more apps for online teaching. There's so many, and I would love to hear in the chat, are there other apps that you know of or that you're using that you think everyone here should know about? Tenuto, Tenuto goes with, have you guys ever used musictheory.net? It's an amazing resource for teachers, it's free, and it has theory lessons on the screen that you can screen share with students. So Tenuto is the accompanying app. I've used Tenuto for probably since 2008. I mean, for a long time since I was in college studying <laughs> because it's it helps with, okay, so it has chords, it has ear training. Um, students learn about parallel scales. They learn about um, all kinds, I mean, it has everything in there theory-wise. 
ear training. It has harmonic. Anyway, it's great. You should check it out. <laughs> Make Music Cloud is also a wonderful tool that is owned by, that kind of goes along with Finale, Alfred's tool for viewing music on the iPad. It's an amazing, it's so cool. They have a whole library of music that you could access to when you subscribe to Make Music. And you can use that during your lessons with your students. Your students can practice with it at home. That is a, an amazing solution to have your music library on hand with you all the time. And they have like endless resources within Make Music. I like to use it for sight reading. I think it's really neat because you can just fly through music and then you have a lot of recommendations for your students. Music Flash Class. Have any of you heard of Music Flash Class? It's wonderful. It is going to help you quiz your students on note reading. You can adjust how long the quizzes are. You can do what you can adjust which notes they're being quizzed on. So if you're doing both treble and bass staff, you know all of the notes, or if you're just doing like five finger notes on the treble clef, whatever you want, you can customize it. Okay, and then Note Rush. A lot of teachers I know, especially during COVID, during the pandemic, started using Note Rush. It's another, it's another way to help them get faster at reading their notes but it's a little more gamified and it listens to the piano while they're playing, which is awesome. PDF Viewer is just a way to view music on your MacBook and you can use the writing tool to write on the music, save the music and send it to the student. So I, I wanna pause really quick because I hope you are, I hope you're getting the vision and that your mind is expanding a little bit to realize that there are so many tools to create a, an interactive and engaging experience for students, whether that is online or in person. Now, I never want to hear from anyone here today the excuse that online lessons are not as engaging as in person because it's not true. What is true is the teacher is not being engaging with the student. What we need to do as teachers, as musicians, is pivot, is pivot how you teach. So if you have students that are bored or students that are not interested or students that are distracted or little students that are five years old who just are not acting interested, the problem is not the student. The issue is how that teacher is being engaging during online lessons. And it takes time, it takes effort, but I, I can tell you, based off of my own experience and working with hundreds, thousands of teachers who have made this transition, I have teachers teaching group classes to four and five-year-olds online. All online, she does it all online. I have other teachers teaching group classes to adults and to teenagers doing hybrid of group and in-person lessons. We have teachers who are teaching composition and theory and all kinds of things with a wait list because they're having such success with online lessons. So I should have said that at the beginning, but I wanted to mention it now because everything mentioned today from equipment to apps to composition to using Finale to create engaging lessons, all of it is with the purpose of helping your student learn how to be a successful musician and how to be interested and excited about music. It's not to uh, say how cool you are or to make videos for YouTube to, to get popular, anything like that. It has one purpose and that is to help our students be better musicians. Now, what I, how, how I want you to think about this is we are filling your toolbox with a ton of tools, with a hundred tools if we can. And then every student is different. And you're not going to use every app on the screen for every student in your studio. But you might have a student later today who could use Tenuto, who would find Tenuto really fun and interesting. And now theory comes alive to them versus working in a book, right? Or you might have a new beginner student who, who needs help with note reading and they're just not interested. Well, that's where we pull up Note Rush and we say, hey, I want you to download this app and let's do it together right now. So let's be more flexible and less traditional in how we view how we teach. Okay, moving on to 
how do you, how can you actually use apps during an online lesson? This is a hurdle for people. They go, well, I love these apps, but how in the world do I actually use it during a lesson? So here are four ways to do it. The first one is to screen share from your iPad. So if you're on Zoom, you can share your screen from whatever device you're using and the student can see it on their end. Now the student's going to tell you what to tap. So they'll tell you the answers because they can't interact with that app. The next one is to connect your device to your computer and share it in Zoom. The other one is to, the next one is to share the app via QuickTime, then share your screen. The last one is to have the student download the app from their end and do it live during the lesson. So you won't be able to see them doing it, but they can still stay on the call with you while they do the app and they can tell you their score or how it went. Okay, are you concerned <laughs> about learning everything you need to learn? So many teachers experience overwhelm with learning new tech, introducing apps to students, and making use of technology in your studio. Two things I want you to tell yourself. Is, the first one is everything takes time, so be patient. The second one is to seek out help, which is why you're here today, I'm assuming. You thought, this is so awesome, this webinar is being offered. I actually could use some help in this area, so let's get on the webinar, which is awesome. There is more help out there. The Teach Music Online podcast, we just hit 100 episodes, which was really exciting. We have 100, or 100 episodes now on all things from business to software automation to tech tools, and it's all free. So seek that help out to get inspiration and guidance as you need it. Also, inside Teach Music Online, because everyone is different and has different needs, we do coaching calls twice a month and we get teachers on from all over the world and we can coach you on how to overcome these tech hurdles, how to incorporate more tech in your studio and a lot of other things, but specifically for today about tech. Okay, let's talk about video calling software. What do you use currently for those teaching online? What are you using? Um, this is probably the most common question I get <laughs> is actually I get two, two, the two most common questions are how do I get new students for marketing and um, which video calling software do you recommend? So tell me in the chat, what are you using? <clears throat> okay, we have three for Zoom so far, not surprised. Four for Zoom, five for Zoom. <laughs> Okay, awesome. It looks like Daniel switched over to Forte after our first call. Glad to hear that. I love Forte. Google Meet, Zoom. I'm just thrilled so far. We don't have anyone saying FaceTime. Oh, there was one. I knew we'd have one. <laughs> so the reason why I don't recommend FaceTime is because you can't use anything I've talked about. You can't have multiple views. You can't share your screen you're not able to really be interactive in any way. So something else I'm really adamant about is being professional in everything you do in your business. And so the first thing I would say is choose one calling software and you always tell the student and parent how to make that happen, not the other way around where we are saying to the parent, well, what do you want to use? Or what well, do you have an iPhone? We can use FaceTime. Let's not do that anymore because that's just making it more confusing for you. So, I'm, let me check my time really quick. Okay, we're good. When thinking about video calling software, you wanna ask yourself, what is it that you need to accomplish during lessons? Okay, so you're going to use a different software for group than you might for one-on-one. -on -one. You might want a calling software that allows you to have a metronome or a music staff or a share video. So different software has different capabilities. Here are the four I am currently, <laughs> there might be more that come out, but currently these are the four that I am recommending. Forte, Musicology, Rock Out Loud Live, and Zoom. All of these have the following. Screen share, um, you can share video with audio, a link for students to join easily, and excellent audio, okay? I think Zoom has actually done a great job of improving their audio. Um, they now offer advanced audio settings and I don't think it's lacking in audio anymore. Here is some comparison between these four software. 
um, solutions. And I wanted to point out a couple of things. So the only one on the screen that's free is Forte. And that's amazing. They will always be free. I do work with Forte. I consult with them quite a bit. And with Forte, it's free, but it doesn't have group calling. So if you look on the right hand side, Rock Out Loud and Zoom both do group calls. So you might use Forte for one-on-one -on -one lessons, but also subscribe to Zoom for those group sessions or for those virtual recitals. Musicology, while it's the more expensive one, they have some amazing features that the other ones don't. They have a metronome, an on-screen metronome. She has a whiteboard that's awesome. And um, I think my favorite feature is their on-screen MIDI keyboard. So if you connect your keyboard to your computer and you're, you're playing the song or chords or scales, it's going to visually show the student on the on-screen keyboard it lights up the keys so they can see that. So that's really especially helpful for new beginners if you're teaching them notes. Um, I have other suggestions for that, but I don't think I have time to get into it. But for now, know that checking out Musicology could be really helpful for you. Whichever software you use, I, I wanna encourage you to stop using FaceTime, Google Duo, or Messenger Video because they're going to limit you in how engaging you can be with the student. Let me grab, if you have not, um, tried Forte yet, they have, okay, let me just put it in the chat. Because it's free, I wanna send that link through and encourage you to check out Forte. Okay, let's talk about our last, I think this is the last um, big topic for today, and that is software to help automate things in your studio. So what does automate mean? It means you are, you are outsourcing a task. So you are automating something that you would normally have to do. So now you don't have to do it anymore. Here are some, just a few things that you can automate as a business owner. Student registration, meet and greet, new lesson sign up, new student onboarding, scheduling, lesson cancellations, invoicing and billing, and collecting payments. Where should you start with automating your studio? The first step, so this is kind of like the order of priority I would give you. So as you're thinking bigger, more long-term, maybe more, high, uh, more online versus hybrid, as you're thinking bigger, which is what I always want you to do, um, I want you to think about automating things so that you're, you ultimately have more time. Whether that's more time to teach or more time to compose, or more time to perform or spend time with family, we want to give you back your time so that you're not spending like five hours a week in studio management. The first step is to automate scheduling and payments. You could set this up today. This could all be set up today, whether you have, I don't care how many students you have, you could sit down at your computer and set this up in an afternoon. The second step would be student registration. My best tip for this would be to use Google Forms. If you're not already using Google Forms, the reason why is because it's all online and as the new student fills out that form or the new parent fills out the registration form, it's going to take that data and put it into a Google spreadsheet for you. So you're not having to manually input anything or keep a bunch of papers at your house from emails that have been sent over to you. So Google Forms, 100%, will automate that process. Also, new student onboarding. Creating email templates. Did you know inside Gmail, you can create email templates. So every time you get new inquiries, questions about lessons, a new student, you can have several templates right there, ready to go, so that you're not having to spend time every single time answering questions or creating those emails. <clears throat> okay. Okay. I wanted to introduce you to Fonz. Do any of you use Fonz payment and scheduling software yet? I would love to hear, and I'm gonna put a link in the chat because I love links. And you can take this, um, click on that link, take a look at it after our call if you want. Payments and scheduling on autopilot. It's true, you can do that. Maybe you use My Music Staff. Auto, um, Fonz is similar to My Music Staff, but it's more automated. So they have a, a few more steps that they integrate 
to creating it so that it's automated. You can also have your, you can have a button on your website that allows your students to schedule lessons with you or to schedule a meet and greet with you without ever having to call you or contact you at all. It's just, it's skipping a few steps so that you don't have to do them. Okay. Um, they also have a markets play, a marketplace where you can advertise for lessons. Oh, then that's the last slide for fonts. <laughs> I thought we had one more, but I did want to mention that they allow you to have a calendar. They have automatic cancellation fees that I've found fonts to be the most effective. And because I work with teachers, I get a lot of feedback from teachers who are trying different tools. So duet is another one. My music staff, um, funds. Some people use Outlook for invoicing. Um, there's a whole bunch of options. And while Fonz costs money, I believe it's $30 a month. They might've changed it, but it used to be $30 a month. You're getting back your time. So if you're charging $60, $100 an hour for lessons, and you're spending five hours a week on studio management, if we can replace that and automate those things, then you're actually making back that money plus a lot more because you're freeing up so much of your time. So again, we are approaching our studio from a professional business standpoint, not the traditional teacher down the street standpoint anymore. We're looking at the much bigger picture. What can you spend time setting up now so that in the future you're going to increase value and so you can increase your rates and spend time doing things you'd rather be doing, right? Okay, TMO members have access to set up checklists and I actually have a video, this five minute video below is I have a video you can send to all of your new students to help them get set up for online lessons. So that's another way to automate is to video yourself teaching them how to get set up. So how, what equipment they need, anything you need them to know, create a video and, and have that ready to go to send new students. Or if you're a member, you can use mine. I teach them how to get their, how to position their camera, how to um, have good sound. We talk about internet, all the important things you wanna make sure your new students know. Okay, so I wanna hear, what are you most excited about after everything we've gone through so far today? What are you most excited about? Is it investing in some new tech? Is it exploring OBS? Maybe it's signing up for some new video calling software like Forte or Musicology, automating payments using Fonz or Duet, adding new apps, or maybe screen sharing more throughout your lessons. Tell me what is it that you're most excited about? And I am gonna be watching your answers. <clears throat> okay, exploring OBS, awesome. Very exciting, I love OBS, even though it takes a little bit of time to learn. <laughs> okay, Kep says new video calling software. Jane is getting new equipment. Monica wants to explore OBS. Daniel wants to get new students, awesome. I do have a free marketing webinar um, that I'm gonna put a link to I haven't mentioned it today, but because Daniel mentioned getting new students, um, that's my link to help increase your income as an online teacher and make sure you check that out if you're wanting to learn more about how to increase your students, how many students you're teaching. And this is another thing I am really excited and passionate about is removing those limitations, any limitations you have in your mind or false ideas about online teaching. So if you're on Facebook at all, you might see people talk about like what, what you can't do or the negative parts of being a studio owner and an online teacher, which none of them are actually true, right? It's just all opinion. And you get to choose what you believe or what you wanna create. Um, it's all up to you. So if you wanna create a, a studio with 100 students and you're teaching group classes online, guess what? I know I could probably tell you of five teachers I know doing that right now. And because they're doing it, I know you can do it as well. Or maybe you wanna create, uh, do music production and engineering and you wanna teach students how to do production. 
I know teachers are doing that as well. So anything is possible. And I, I am going to give you permission to believe those things versus let those doubts and fears or those like, well, what ifs kind of limit you from progressing because those thoughts aren't going to help you learn anything new or help you get any new students or help you in any way, really. So let's just embrace really positive thinking. So I now, I think that that is my end. Um, I would love to chat with some of you and answer any questions you have. It could be questions about these topics you see on the screen. Um, any questions about online teaching, about my program, about using Finale or Make Music. We have some experts here today on the call that aren't talking right now, but <laughs> they're here as well to help, out, to help you out with that. Um, but I'm really happy we had a little bit of extra time so let's talk. Um, okay, go ahead. Did you? <laughs> Hi, Felicia. <laughs> I was just going to jump in and we had several questions towards the beginning of the webinar about practice space. Awesome. Um, someone was asking about, does it allow the appropriate privacy to be allowed by private schools? And someone else was asking about use on different devices. If it's an app, is it also available to use on a computer? Practice space. You guys will have to go through to my link. I don't know about a computer, if they have um, a desktop access, but I know that they are available on Android and iOS. So iPads, phones, um, they have a lot. I feel like they might have a desktop version, but that might be something you, you'll have to check out. And if you click that link, I think through my link, they do offer a free demo. I'll put that in again, just in case. Um, a demo, yeah. We also had a question about note rush asking if it works for winds, strings, and percussion. Um, I think because we're coming at it from the piano lens, I'm not sure if it would be any different. It's just a piano app, as far as I know. I I'll put I just grabbed the link for that. Here's a link for note rush. Um, it is not a strings app, it's a learning piano app. I mean, it's a learning notes on the staff app. So I don't know if they have different staves for different instruments, but I know it can listen to the piano. Yeah, my expectation then is it probably would work for winds and strings and percussion. It probably would not work for viola or anything that would need alto or tenor clef. Um, but if it can do both treble and- If it's and hearing bass, pitch, if it's yeah. hearing pitch, yeah. Yeah. That'd be interesting to try, I wanna know. <laughs> well, we'll get back to you guys on that one. <laughs> Uh, we also had a question, I think just for you and the way that you're teaching that he said, do you ever record a session for sharing as opposed to live streaming? Um, for me teaching teachers or for students? Doesn't specify. Can you maybe answer to both? Yeah. So for students, we do have teachers that do asynchronous lessons where they're recording lessons in advance and sharing those with students. I actually have a new course called Course Creator for Musicians, which also teaches teachers how to create a, a digital course that you can send to your students or sell. Um, I've been, that's been a fun project for me because I know a lot of teachers want to create passive income. Um, for myself, I have several, many dozens of videos of webinars I've done <laughs> that I, I share with teachers um, in my email list, through my website. Um, I mentioned them in the podcast as well. So those, those are things that I do record and share after. Excellent. Thank you. Um, another question is specifically about teaching piano. Stephen asks, wondering if I can do online at the acoustic piano, or is it more efficient and better technically to use an electric keyboard? I would say, uh, I mean, most of our teachers still have acoustic pianos. A lot of them have both. So if they want to channel in the MIDI connection, they have that option. But um, I mean, if you look up, you don't have to look him up, but a good friend of mine, Joseph, who runs Flex Lessons, he has stereo microphones next to his acoustic and his sound is incredible. So I, I don't think there are any limitations with the acoustic piano. Your setup will just look different than if you have a keyboard or, or a hybrid piano that has that digital connection. Yeah. And just from my experience to hosting webinars, I've seen piano presenters host on both acoustic and, and digital. Mm -hmm. So I think Carly's nailed it. As long as you have the right setup for it, it should work for both. Yeah, for sure. 
Um, what about vocal students? Janet asks if there's any special consideration for voice. So Janet, um, great question. I have teachers we work with who teach voice online. I would say your video calling software is even more important for voice because some software doesn't pick up higher pitches. Um, I know we've had complaints from teachers with Zoom about that and anyone that I know that switched over to Forte has found it a lot better. So that would be the first thing is making sure your video calling software on your end and the student's end is the right one that works well. Um, but as far as tech goes, it's all the same things. It's having a good microphone. It's having a good camera. It's having, you don't necessarily need as multiple, many multiple angles as a piano teacher might need. Um, but there are apps. I know our vocal, our voice teachers in our program recommend. There's one called app, app companist. That's amazing. It has all kinds of warm ups. Maybe you're already familiar with it, but it has a ton of different warm ups you can do where your student has the app open on their phone and you have it as well. So you can kind of do it at the same time. We also had Patty just shared with us in the chat that clean feed also helps with voice teaching. So that might be something to look into as well. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Um, Deborah also let us know, jumping back to note rush that note rush allows you to use horn guitar and violin with its mic. So it does have different Perfect. Uh, instrument options. Thanks Deborah. Uh, we have some in the Q&A box. Um, have you tried Internet MIDI? Internet MIDI, actually, that was when I said, there's other things I could talk about, but I don't have time for. It was Internet MIDI. <laughs> so Internet MIDI and Classroom Maestro are amazing tools for remote teaching um, because you can connect. Internet MIDI, for those who don't know, it's connecting your keyboard to the student's keyboard. So as you play, the sound comes through their keyboard. And as they play, it comes through your keyboard. So it's actually like connected in real time. So you can kind of play things together, which is just amazing that we can do that. Classroom Maestro allows you to put a staff on the screen and everything you play will show up on the staff and the keyboard. So those are both tools. Actually, I do have a code for those. It's uh, um, Teach Online 2022, I think, Teach Online will get you a discount. If I if that doesn't work, let me know. But if you want to check those out. <clears throat> and then looks like, can you use OBS on Zoom or an, um, or an iPad? So yes on Zoom, but it has to be from a desktop. So OBS triggers a vir what we call a virtual camera. So you click start virtual camera. And then in Zoom, it's your source that you select. So like right now, I selected my Nikon as my camera source. Once you start OBS and click virtual streaming, you select virtual camera as your camera source. And then it's going to share with your whoever you're on your call with. It's going to, to channel through whatever you're doing on OBS. So it kind of replaces your camera with OBS setup. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> And then any advice tips on using the use of MIDI guitar? So I don't play guitar, but I know our teachers that have MIDI, MIDI guitar, using an audio interface would be best for you because you can connect it and the student can hear that direct channeled audio. Um, if that's possible to get an audio interface for you, 100% better than just the acoustic sound that the microphone picks up. It's so great being with all of you. And I would say, like your ambitions for teaching online can be as big as you want them to be. Um, don't, again, like don't let any outside person <laughs> tell you that it's not possible or that it's not sustainable or that it's going to go away because it's not. Um, it's just the best perspective to have is to be optimistic about what you can create. And thanks to so many people and tools, there are tools to help you learn how to do it all. Now, <clears throat> can I contact you for how you share recorded work audio video? Um, yes, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, my email is carly at teachmusic.online. Anyone, you're welcome. Whoops, I missed an E. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, I cannot type right now. There we go. Anyone's welcome to reach out if you want to follow up with me or you have any questions about anything we've talked about.
And then if you do have any questions about Finale or Make Music Cloud, feel free to reach out to me or to our support teams here at Make Music. Um, as Carly mentioned, Finale has a, a new lower price. And so Finale Academic is only $99. That is good for both teachers and students. Awesome. So that can be a huge, huge add to your, to your studio if you are interested in that. Um, and with that, it looks like we've cleared out our question queue. So thank you so much, Carly, for coming back to us. Uh, thank you to the audience, not only for coming today, but for dealing with our reschedule. We both really appreciate that and that you came back this month. Uh, we will be in touch when we convince Carly to come back and do a part mm -hmm. three. <laughs> and I hope everyone has a Good. great day. Thank, thank you. you so much.